Welcome everyone to today's episode right here on the School of Radiance podcast. I'm your host, a humble human on a mission, here to help you achieve and receive the best hair, skin, and nails of your life. In today's episode, we have the fabulous Susan Bratton joining us here. She has been on the show a number of times and is one of my favorite returning guests. And we have a very exciting show in store for you all today. We're going to be talking about beauty. We're going to be talking about biohacking. We're going to be talking about intimacy and sexuality and all sorts of things. Let me tell you a little bit about Susan Bratton. She is the intimacy expert to millions, is a champion and advocate for all those who desire intimacy and passion their whole life long. She's created hundreds of techniques that transform having sex into making love and is the world's most well-respected sexual biohacker. Susan is co-founder and CEO of two companies, Personal Life Media Incorporated, a publisher of the Better Love brand of heart-connected lovemaking techniques and bedroom communication skills and sexual regenerative therapies. Get her free sex tips by email at betterlover.com. And of the 20 LLC, a manufacturer of organic and botanical supplements that enhance sexual vitality. Flow is a nitric oxide booster for better blood flow. The Desire multivitamin, multi-mineral supplements have high quality methylated B vitamins and libido botanicals built in. Susan is also an active and caring spokesperson for Gaines Wave, Femi Wave, Foria Intimate Wellness, and the Dr. Joel Kaplan Company, three sexual biohacking regenerative companies whose products and treatments increase one's sex span to achieve ageless sexuality. She is a best-selling author and publisher of 44 books and programs, including Sexual Soulmates, Relationship Magic, Revive Her Drive, Ravish Him, Steamy Sex Ed, The Passion Patch, Hormone Balancing, and Hot to Trot. Susan speaks eloquently from stage and frequently appears on ABC, CBS, The CW, and NBC as well as being the number one downloaded episode guest on Myriad Podcasts. There's a documentary being made about Susan's life and work debuting in 2025, Peel Behind the Scenes at thegift.film. Join her sex tips newsletter at betterlover.com. Follow her personal shares on Instagram, threads, and OnlyFans at Susan Bratton, and get her Lust for Life supplements, Flow and Desire, at the20store.com. Welcome, 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 Susan Bratton. Wow. How are that you today? a comprehensive biography. <laughs> I was like, You've done a lot. Geez, You've done I did a lot. lot. <laughs> Okay. I haven't heard that in a long time. Nobody ever reads the whole darn thing. I was impressed and very well read too. <laughs> well, I thank you. I used my audible book. Just wait till you hear my bedroom voice. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me the name of your new book. Radiance, the new skin science. Oh, I love that. Fantastic. Is it available yet? It sure is. Okay, it great. Sure I will be buying a copy at the end of this podcast. <laughs> oh, thank you. I felt, like I felt like I gave birth when I recorded that. And then you have a documentary coming out. That's very exciting. Yeah. Well, I'm not producing it. It's being produced about me. It's about my story and my work, my life's work. Excellent. And uh, that's talk about humbling. That's very mm -hmm. humbling when you get recognized at the level of that. And the filmmaker is a conscious documentarian. So his most recent movie that's coming out pretty darn soon is called The Cost of Convenience. And it's, mm. I'm a tech nerd and I was shocked when I watched it because it's about how big tech is using our data to manipulate us. Then his next film is called Forever Young. Uh, he met me talking about this notion of sex span and Forever Young asks the question, now that we can live so much longer than any of our forebears. How do we plan our life when we get into our 50s and 60s? Uh, because we're going to live a lot longer. And then he's doing the film uh, about my work and my, my life called The Gift. And The Gift is really, we got the name because our sexuality is one of the gifts of our humanity, along with the love of family and friends, the beauty of nature, of music, of art, 
things like that, you know, the deliciousness of nutritious food. Um, these are some of the things that really make life worth living. And sexuality gets so censored that um, people, you know, there's person A and they, they, they're religiously repressed, they're sexually shamed, they... No one ever told them what their parts are or how they work or gave they're them grinding their the corporate life. They're grinding the corporate life. They the, sex falls by the wayside for them for myriad reasons. And then there's person B who has a commitment to their sexuality. They they realize that their sexuality is a part of their vitality, that their passion is their is it fuels their other passions and their creativity. And they become a lifelong learner about sexuality and gain more skills and confidence and have more pleasure over time. And they end up looking 10 years younger and living 10 years longer. That's literally what the studies show uh, than their peers who were people number A, you know, people letter A. So um, the sex ban is quite an interesting thing. And it was talking about how important our sexuality is, yet how censored it is that triggered Dave Donnelly, the filmmaker, to say, uh, we need to do a film about this. This is very important. And so thank you for having me again on your show to talk about sexuality and beauty, which are two sides of the same coin as well. Um, I've got, I brought quite a few things to talk to you about today. I know I'm always so excited to reconnect with you. And for those of you who are familiar with Susan Bratton, but maybe you've never seen her in real life. Susan Bratton is the one woman I have met in my entire career. That is the epitome of radiant Amazonian galactic sexual goddess all wrapped up in one. <laughs> You know, it's, it's your presence is very special and it's very unique. And I don't often see this signature in women and the sexuality part is so key. Really, you know, we're one of the few species that have sex for fun. <laughs> so, I mean, why not capitalize on that one, shall we? Um, so if anyone's going to know about how to have great sex and intimate relations, it's you and I love some of the different avenues that you've been going towards lately. I'd love to talk. There's there's a number of things that we want to cover in today's episode, but I'd love to talk talk about this orgasmic activation and orgasmic cross training that you've been talking about lately. Talk to us about what that is conceptually. Yes. So <clears throat> I really want people to have to live up to their orgasmic potential and most people aren't aware of what that even is or and they're so, and they don't know how to get there uh the human body by my count thus far we have 20 different ways we can achieve climactic pleasure some of them are locations to touch others are techniques to use and some are objects of desire that all generate the orgasmic response. But what I have found is that the, the place to start is really to do what I call orgasmic activation of the tissue. And though I do this for men as well, I'd like to just focus on the female body today um, and know that there's always I've got all the male-oriented stuff on my website at Personal Life Media as well. So if you're like, well, what about the dude? But you can go over there and, and it's it's right there. You can just type in orgasmic activation. <laughs> so there were a couple of things that led me to this notion of orgasmic activation. One was um, I read a study, a clinical study of 41 women who a nurse practitioner touched in different erogenous zones of their body, their breasts, their nipples, the clitoral uh, tip or glands, the outer labia the entrance to the vagina, which is called the introidal sphincter, and I think the perineal area. And then ask them, as they touched each part, tell me what you feel. And I read through all the verbatims, and basically it boiled down to, women either felt pain when, you were when they were touched in a specific location, they felt shame, they felt numb, or they felt pleasure. It really was just those four categories. That was kind of what it all netted down to. And what I thought was interesting was that 50% of the women who were touched in, it was 53%, I think, were touched in the introidal area, the entrance to the vagina, felt some pain. So about half of the women felt, I mean, pleasure, sorry, felt pleasure being touched 
at the, the opening to the vagina, only 40% felt pleasure being touched in the clitoral structure, which was surprising to me. And I got to thinking that that's mostly just because women have who have been sexually active, who have been penetrated because we think that sex means intercourse, have had some pleasurable stimulation of that area. But so few women are getting enough clitoral stimulation that it doesn't, it feels pain, shame, or numb to them, not pleasure. And then I met the wonderful Dr. Nan Wise, who is a sex, sexologist neuroscientist who worked with two of the, um, kind of like world renowned um, sex therapists, Beverly, Dr. Beverly Whipple and Dr. Barry Commissaric. She worked with them. She was an fMRI or MRI um, technician for them. And they put women in an MRI and then had their partners with them and their partners touched different parts of their body. And Nan and uh, her team looked at what parts of the brain lit up based on which parts of the body were touched. Then you bring in the exercise physiology of the mind-body connection. When you're starting to work out and you, you can't really access your muscles because you haven't made the neural pathways from the muscle to the brain. And as you begin to develop that muscle, you begin to develop the neural pathways. So you can become much stronger, more quickly and more capable of your body and doing, you know, now you can do a one leg, you can stand on one leg and do, you know, overhead shoulder presses with 10 pound weights where before you could barely stand on one leg. It just becomes the muscle memory of practice and connecting the mind to the body. And everybody knows that if you say to people, what's the biggest sex organ in the body? People are like the brain, but they don't really understand what that means. And what that means is that mind body connection, those neural pathways and, and uh, uh, activating different parts of the brain and the brain then feeling the stimulation and registering it as pleasure instead of pain or shame or numbness. And so when I thought about those 41 women, I thought to myself, those women, had they been pleasured in a safe, supportive honorable, per consensual, pleasurable way where their partner touched them and they, they did it in a way that made them feel good, it would transmute the pain, the shame, and the numbness into pleasure. Because that's exactly what I've done with myself. At 62, I'm having the most incredible sex of my life. And a big part of it is through yoni massage and expanded orgasm practice, which is a clitoral stroking technique that I've been teaching for two decades, where it's not just the tip of my clitoris that makes me feel good or the entrance to my vagina being touched or pleasured that feels good. Every part of my vulva is activated and sending signals to different parts of my brain in parallel processing of incredible pleasure, which has allowed me to become highly orgasmic. And then that led me to thinking about how these objects of desire, and I'm almost done, I'll wrap it up. These objects of de desire, these sex tools, as I like to call them, not toys, that they're uh, one of my friends, Kristen Tribby, who is the vice president of a company called Fun Factory, whose toys are super high quality and ones I recommend, has a wide variety of different styles of toys. And she explained to me one day that there are basically eight types of toys that pleasure the vulva. And I got to thinking about that and some work that I've done with Sherry Winston, um, an incredible woman who birthed over 500 babies as a midwife and wrote a seminal book called The Women's Anatomy of Arousal, which was an ASEC book of the year in 20 something. Um, she really taught me about this concept of orgasmic cross training, <clears throat> this notion that when you've got one pathway to orgasm working, a lot of people just stay there and they use that pathway and that's their go-to pathway. But there are an unlimited, an infinite amount of pathways to pleasure, which goes right back to the first thing I said about the 20 kinds of orgasms. And the 20th one is wild card because there's always something more. And I begin to, began to see that different pleasuring tools stimulated different parts of the vulva, vulva, vagina, or what I like to call yoni, Y-O-N-I, which to me symbolizes um, a spiritual and, uh, and <clears throat> honorable perspective on the fact that our entire urogenital complex is all 
passionately pleasant and has orgasmic potential once we get the touch we need and the love that we need and the, the comfort and con consent and surrender to our pleasure that we that we should have been taught but didn't. And um, I started explaining to women, instead of buying another pair of shoes, buy another sex toy. Just get your pleasure chest built up so that you've got the eight kinds and use them in partnered play and in self-pleasuring so that you can begin to light your brain up and transform shame pain, shame, pain and numbness into pleasure so you can begin to have all those 20 kinds of orgasms so you can look 10 years younger and feel and and live 10 years longer and feel a happier longer more passionately pleasurable life so that's really that whole kind of arc of how i ended up showing people and for those of you going what are the tools what are the tools i put them all at orgasmic cross training Dot com. You can just go right there and there they all are. And you can be like, okay, I'm going to start with this one. That looks good. Um, and that means you can take your sexuality and your, your orgasmic confidence into your own hands so that when you're with a partner, you are really a confident comer <laughs> and you don't have to worry because you come so easily. You could basically just like, boop, touch me and I, you can boop, and I come. So, um, and that's, they're all just learned skills. Yeah. Speaking of learned skills, thank you, number one, for everything that you just shared there. I always appreciate hearing your perspectives, your wisdom, things that you've learned since we last connected. So thank you for that orgasmic activation and orgasmic cross-training um, concept and explanation there. You said something that really struck a chord with me, Susan. Great. Uh, actually, in some of your other content that you've been making online, talking about you know men and women coming together, mm. no pun intended, yeah. but for the man to slow yeah. down, mm -hmm. slow down, because typically it takes a woman anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes to get warmed up. And I mean, the guy, like they're ready to rock and roll. Yeah, 20 to yeah. 30 so it take now. it takes time, and then we have a, we have these these women who are mothers. Maybe they're starting to enter perimenopause. They're starting to notice things shift with their desire machinery, and also their brains. Right, mom mom brain before going to sleep is like, what did I have to do the day before? What do I have to do tomorrow? So it can be a little bit tricky with that to learn how to shut that down. Um, I just wanted to share something that. I found massage, you know, full body massage, throw in some Reiki in there, some mm -hmm. essential oils. That is, I think, a really great way to just relax the feminine, feeling safe. You mentioned things like this too. So it's like full body activation. And then your pleasure centers are like, let's go, let's do this, let's receive. Uh, so I just wanted to share that because a lot of times people think, oh, you know, it, it takes forever to get warmed up or to climax. And there's, it's just important for you to know your body and not evacuate your body. We see this a lot with corporate women, especially around perimenopause and menopause and postmenopause. They kind of evacuate their body and they just give, give, give everything to their family and their partners but they forget to give to themselves, yeah. but not so much give, but receive. And this is a very feminine dynamic because if a woman is push, push, pushing, we do that when we give birth for a very short period of time. The rest of the time, women are in an expansive, receptive mode. And I also want to thank you for bringing up the fact of about technology driving us to make certain decisions. I was actually on a scientific roundtable presentation on this very concept. It was actually around politics, but we were interested in it from a health perspective. So from, you know, things including sexual, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go here, sexual orientation, different things that are societally acceptable. You know, you do have to be careful on when you're using technology so that your personal practice isn't getting interfered with, especially on a soul level, energetic level, spiritual level, because I think that sexual practice is going to be unique and beautiful and different 
for everybody. And, you know, I also have my, my own personal opinions on other things that people can uh, consume to get things flowing. But I do like to take it from a very a pure perspective, soul alignment, energy alignment perspective. And then, hey, guess what? Everything else opens up when you become soft enough and you feel safe enough in order to allow that activation and, and orgasmic cross training and then the communication stuff. I mean, this is going to be a part two, but how to communicate what those needs are with what I just shared, Susan, of what do you find interesting or different or worthwhile amplifying um, that I just mentioned? Yeah. Um, two things that occurred to me. The first was something that I call the bullseye touch technique. And I teach this primarily for the, for helping our male body partners who are, you know, much more testosterone dominant. They wake up with morning erections. If they're healthy, they masturbate pretty much every day. Um, where us female bodied, uh, we have the same amount of erectile tissue in our vulva as our male body partners do in their penis, but nobody's thinking about our erectile function. Nobody's thinking about our clitoral erections and our, well, I mean, uh, I am, yeah, yeah, you are, <laughs> um, you know, people don't even know that they, that a penis worth of erectile tissue is wrapped around the vagina and comes to a point at the tip of the clitoris, but that there's that much material. If I took all the erectile tissue out of your vulva and laid it in your hand, it would completely fill your hand up. And we think about the tip of our clitoris as the place when activation, the orgasmic activation really spreads that and makes that all activated. But when I talk to people, I say, use the bullseye touch technique, which is think about a bullseye. And instead of going for the creamy center, you know, right away, what you want to do is work from the outside in the extremities. So that full body massage, a foot rub, being held, your eyelids kissed, your cheeks kissed before you even begin to touch any sexual parts. And then the lips and mouth and the breast and nipples are two of the three legs of erotic activation, the third being the vulva vagina complex or the yoni. And don't skip over those, but linger there first, because what that does is send blood down to the pelvic bowl to seep through the vaginal mucosal lining so that the blood plasma begins the lubrication process and the nipple stimulation and kissing begins the um, contraction process for orgasm. So when you are um, making love to yourself or with a partner, you really need to include all of the components to achieve that full pleasure, but giving yourself those 20 or 30 minutes. And that brings me to the second piece of it, which is that I have a couple of non-negotiables sexually that I've learned over the years. And one of them is that I have to actively be patient with my own body uh, she's slow to warm up as are all female bodies. And I mean, there might be a moment where we've got a new lover and we're young and full of energy or what have you, and we're hot and we're ready to go. But that's generally the, you know, the, 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 the few case, not the daily occurrence. And when I feel impatient with myself, like I'm not quite ready, God, why is it taking me so long to get turned on? Because I use yoni massage as one of my on ramps to getting my blood flow into my genital systems and getting my lady boner so that everything feels good. Because if you think about having sex with a flaccid vulva where you're not erect, then there's very little material that's plumped up. There's no blood flow to it. It's not engorged. It's not erect. So it, it doesn't have much surface area. So it's not sending very many signals to the brain to register as pleasure. But when it's fully plumped and swollen and too masked and engorged, and there's lots of blood flow and you're very lubricated and you're fluffed up, you are sending a lot of signals, which means it's much easier to orgasm in many different ways because you just have the more surface area sending more signals of pleasure. So not forcing myself to hurry, but allowing whatever time it takes for me to settle and get in my body. And if things come up for me, I have to say them. I have to let go of emotions. Um, you know, it, it just happens, especially if you're having any strife with your partner and you're trying to repair things or get, move through some frustrations, you're going to find those frustrations will come up as you relax 
and you begin to think about it and you've got to let them go and then keep going, moving through and keep going and keep pleasuring and keep expanding. And then pretty soon you'll start to feel that. And then, then my second non-negotiable is that I don't continue to have any kind of sex, whether that's oral pleasuring, intercourse, making out, whatever it is that I'm doing, if I'm not enjoying it right in the moment, I say, okay, I need to stop now. I don't owe anyone their ejaculation. I don't owe anyone anything. What I owe is the truth to myself about my what my body wants in every moment and to speak that truth into the moment with my partner so that they know that I am always congruent and consensual with everything that I'm doing. So they don't have to worry that over time they, I will have just taken what I was getting and then not want to be with them anymore. And so I think those are two very important, mature and, and mature perspectives from a sovereign woman who has incredible sex because I do honor those things. Oh, beautiful. You're such an eloquent speaker on this topic. You really are. And I completely agree with you that there, for the woman, very feminine, we need to soften in order to receive, right? Yeah. Everything, all the tissues, all that needs to be softened. And I love that you mentioned the surface area situation, because for me, you know, my whole body, the skin, the largest organ of, of our body, I mean, that's a whole lot of surface area, right? So yeah. let's, let's, you know, play with the beautiful aspects of ourselves that our skin is a part of, right? Our, our yeah. skin is that, you know, I would go so far as to say the skin is the largest sexual organ of the body, especially, you know, if, if you're thinking about kink and all those kind of things, oh, yeah. like, sure. like different textures, I, th I, I personally think that the skin is the largest sexual organ of the body. It is. No, it's mm -hmm. not that there's no doubt it is. It's a hundred percent the largest organ of our body. It's the largest organ of our body. And it's so incredibly sensual that uh, to not fully take advantage of it with sensual massage, yoni massage, there are four kinds of touch. This might be of interest to you since we're so, you and I are so skin oriented anyway. There's uh, healing nurturing, sensual, and sexual. Those are the four kinds of touch. I also learned that from Sherry, Sherry Winston, The Women's Anatomy of Arousal, great book. And um, I think that's very, very important to understand that sometimes we need to start with the healing touch, and then we move, need to move to nurturing, and then we need to move into sensual, and then we can get to sexual because there is an ascension ladder in our touch even with our lovers. I 100% agree with that. And so what I'll often do, I, I don't know if this is too personal, but I'm sure it's going to help someone. I love to, you know, take a bath, do all my beautiful personal grooming, make sure everything's all smooth and hydrated. We're talking like a, emerge from the bathtub, a hydrated, smooth goddess. I mean, that's just, just for me. Then I'm all ready for my massage and Reiki, right? So I love that, you know, I would, I would add the cleansing, the grooming, then the healing, the nurturing, the, um, the intimate, the sexual. I, I, I yeah, love, sexual sexual. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I love that. This. I thought you'd like that. Yeah. So great. So great. Because I think so many times, just from society with, you know, what people see in videos and movies and things like that, oh, it's, it's like, the worst. wham, bam, yeah. thank you, ma'am. Let's yeah, get to terrible. right to the sexual. No, you got to warm that female physiology up. Yeah. And then, yes. then, then that sexual um, touch and all of that is, is going to be more impactful, no pun intended. Yes. Well, <laughs> and what you what we see in film and pornography is the patriarchal perspective of what sex is. And what I spend a lot of time doing is just discussing the facets and tenets of what matriarchal sex is, which is how sex really needs to be. We need to move off of the rush to penetration, the you know, lack of breast play, the poor kissing, the lack of sensuality, et cetera. So um, thank you for doing such a good service to the conversation around that. 
Well, thank you, Susan. Do you have any final words for everyone tuning in here on how sexuality can really help us all become our most radiant versions, live longer, live brighter, live more satisfaction filled lives, not just being satisfied, but fully satisfied and then having it radiate outwards. Do you have any closing words to uh, assist us with that? Yeah, I think the very first thing is to understand that you are responsible for your own sexual growth. That just like personal growth, sexual growth is similar. And the more, as you mature, the more sex you have, the better you get, the more confidence you get, the less you worry about body image issues. And um, that learning about your sexuality and your desires is a lifelong journey of joy. And one of the things that I recently put together was something I call my sex life bucket list. I don't know that I've told you about this. Um, So the sex life bucket list is 48 erotic play dates that incorporate things like learning new orgasm techniques, fun things to do in the bedroom. Probably about half of them can be done as a solo participant, but the other half you do need a partner. And the bucket list is a PDF. If you, if you go to sexlifebucketlist.com, if you can put that in the show notes, I'd appreciate it. That um, you get a PDF and then you get a 40 minute, essentially a video workshop from me where I walk you through the 48 erotic play dates and tell you what they are and give you some insight into what the benefits and how you do them. And it's really fun if you have a partner to do it with a partner too. You can print out two copies of the PDF. You watch the video in bed together. That's your first erotic play date. It's kind of sexy and I turn you on and tell you about all these fun things to do. You mark beside each one an A, a B, or a C. A is, this is definitely going on my sex life bucket list. B is, it wouldn't be on my list, but if it's on yours, I would do it with you. And C is, it's not for me right now never say never, because as you mature, things you used to look at and go, why would anybody want to do that? Now you're like, oh, that's what I'm at. That's what I'm fantasizing about as a solo pleasure. So I think the sex life bucket list gives you kind of a, 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 a roadmap and some choices about what you want to learn next. I don't care what you want to learn. I just want you to keep learning. And um, so it gives you access, it sends you it to links where you can learn more and, you know, all kinds of articles and videos I've done. Like, I want to learn how to have a yoni massage or give a yoni massage. Okay, here you go. This is where you go to get that next step. So it's kind of a Rosetta Stone into decades of my work with, I've written 5,000 articles. I've written 44 books and programs. And a lot of the stuff that's linked off of the Sex Life Bucket List is, is just free. So There's so much there that just taking the journey so that you have the opportunity to have the hormone cascade, the neurotransmitter release, the the nervous system reboot, the oxytocin generation. I mean, there's so many things that are healthy and keep you looking young and feeling young in addition to having a really fun, sexy life that I think the sex life bucket list is a good place to start. Perfect. Thank you. I've added that sexlifebucketlist.com into the show notes for, for everybody to tune in. And I mean, we, it wouldn't be a biohacking beauty sexual podcast if we didn't talk about peptides and PT-141. I'll just close with this. that This is you know one of my favorite peptides. It really is great for, obviously, I can't make any medical claims. This is educational information only. If you think you have a medical condition, you must seek the guidance of a licensed physician. For me personally, I really like peptides for various different reasons. And I think if something can support the central nervous system and libido enhancement for women, it is actually FDA approved for uh, female libido. And, uh, you know, there's other options for men too. But some men seem to like the impacts of PT-141 as well. So there's so many tools um, to enhance different areas with your sexual function, no matter what your age is and what stage you are in life. But that 
that ascension ladder model that you shared, Susan, I think is absolutely brilliant. So instead of getting right into the act, really warm things up, you know, cleaning, grooming, healing, safety, all of these things. And your nervous system is just going to relax so that, you know, you listening, 70% of you listening are the woman, you're going to be more capable to receive more fully because everything about you is going to have been relaxed. And this is also where biohacking comes in to reduce that oxidative stress, right? When that oxidative stress is more relaxed, your nervous system will be able to function in the way that it's designed to do. And you're just going to feel better. Your brain's going to be operating better so that you don't have all these thoughts going in while you're trying to focus on one thing um, with you, you and your partner or by yourself. So thank you so much, Susan, for being back on the show, the School of Radiance podcast. Always a pleasure to reconnect with you. Really excited to share your documentary with everybody once it is out as well. So thank you so much, Susan. And uh, just let's close it out with where you would like people to learn more with you today. Oh, sure. Uh, well, if you go to um, Orgasmic Cross Training or you go to um, the Sex Life Bucket List, you'll actually be on my newsletter. And if you have any questions for me, you can reply to any newsletter I send out and I personally get them. So happy to answer any questions there. Um, I'm also on Instagram and uh, you can always just follow me there at my name, Susan Bratton. Fabulous. Well, thank you, Susan. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to today's episode right here on the School of Radiance podcast. Stay beautiful, stay high vibes, stay radiant, work on your sexual energy and that beautiful feminine receiving energy. And for the men out there, work on that giving energy, right? The protection, the providing, that's going to make your woman melt right there when you're giving her that beautiful healing protective energy. Love you all so much. And I will see you again very soon right here on the School of Radiance podcast.